Basic Brewing Radio is brought to you by the American Homebrewers Association, a worldwide community of fermentation enthusiasts. Join the association in September and receive a pound of free Azaka hops with your membership. That's a pound of free Azaka hops when you go to homebrewersassociation.org and use the promo code SEPT hops when you join or renew. That's homebrewersassociation.org and promo code S-E-P-T-H-O-P-S to get a free pound of Azaka hops with your membership. Homebrewersassociation.org. Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, September 9th, 2021. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, Steve Wilkes and I explore three dark sugar candidates from my kitchen pantry in a sugar sampler. If you go to basicbrewing.com, you can find archives of our audio and video shows. And if you go to basicbrewingshop.com, you can find our DVDs and our brewer's logbooks. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Basic Brewing and find our show page on Facebook as well. If you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basicbrewing. And many thanks to everybody who's helping out in, the, in that way. If you go to patreon.com slash basicbrewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Financial supporters have already seen the video I'm going to post on Friday of my Hot Porch Blackberry Hard Seltzer my second attempt at a hard seltzer, and this time I used A46 Bartleby from Imperial, which is a Hornendal Kvik strain, and I fermented it uh, out on my, my hot porch. And this seltzer is actually pretty darn tasty. I sampled a little bit uh, clumsily before I started recording, and I've discovered that blackberry fruit puree uh, does stain carpeting. <laughs> the uh, carpet staining is not bad enough to qualify for a brewing disaster, I don't think. Uh, my wife hasn't seen it yet, but I have already started getting brewing disaster stories, and I'm filing those away, including a, a story from Israel involving a kitchen keezer and around 100 gallons of water. <laughs> not, to, not to spoil it too much. <laughs> one thing one thing I'm looking forward to that I don't think is going to be a disaster. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Our friends and sponsors at High Gravity in Tulsa are going to be hosting the Tulsa Craft Beer Invitational this Saturday. Uh, they've invited uh, 30 plus Oklahoma breweries. And uh, that's that's around half, maybe more of the breweries in the state of Oklahoma. And they're going to be serving special one off beers brewed especially for the event. It's going to be outside, and attendance is limited, so you can feel safer in these COVID times. And the forecast also calls for a breezy day, which helps in that way, too. There will be food trucks, and while you're there, you can visit High Gravity, since you'll be right there in the parking lot, and see the incredible inventory of homebrewing and winemaking ingredients and equipment, including Word Hog electric brewing gear like, like mine, uh, and whether you're you're going or not, you can order your Word Hog electric gear on HighGravityBrew.com using the code EBC75BB and save 75 bucks off your Word Hog purchase. Uh, I'm planning to be at the Tulsa Craft Beer Invitational. I'm trying to talk Steve into going too. I don't know if he can can tear himself away, but uh, I, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do my darndest. That's this Saturday in the parking lot of High Gravity in Tulsa. Check them out at family-owned and operated highgravitybrew.com. Let's take a look into the mailbag. Ken from Ferndale, Michigan, wrote a little while back. Ken says, thoughts on doing a sampler with some Trappist beers using different sugar additions. Could do a triple with clear candy sugar, one with dextrose and a third sugar alternative, or a Belgian dark strong with the darker candy, dextrose, and maybe rock sugar or other. Ken says, I'm, I'm sure there are even some other alternatives that people use that I haven't even thought of. Well, I took that as a challenge. <laughs> I took Ken's inspiration <laughs> for this episode. You know, Ken mentions other alternatives. <laughs> well, at least one of the sugars that I that I picked is something that people might not have used in beers before. Let's go taste some brown beers with Steve Wilkes on the hot porch. Steve Wilkes, welcome to the hot porch. 
<laughs> Hi, James. I, I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be on the hot porch. <laughs> well, <laughs> what you need is a cold beer or three. Or three. <laughs> oh, look, I have I have three cold beers here. Right there in front of you. Yeah. What we got here is a is a uh, sampler. It's a sugar sampler. That's just what I need. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, so this is the sugar sampler. Uh, these are these are three six pack batches of beer that I made with different sugars that I've dark sugars that I found in my pantry. And I I thought you know it's been a while since we did something a little off the wall and and kind of wacky you know as far yeah. as this is concerned. I'm glad you didn't find three kinds of cayenne pepper. <laughs> Ooh, hey. Okay, there's an idea. <laughs> You've sealed your doom. <laughs> okay, so the method, uh, is it appropriate to say methodology or just the method? that I, The method that I used this time is a little bit different uh, because I didn't want to have, I wanted to mute the hop character mm -hmm. in the beer. And I, I did this as a dry malt extract batch. So I still, wa I, st I wanted to boil for a certain amount of time to get rid of that, the hop fruitiness, the hop, any hop character. Uh, but it didn't have to boil for, you know, of course you don't have to boil all grain for an hour. Anyway, here's what it did. <laughs> we've, we've shot two video episodes already. Okay, so I started with five quarts or 4.7 liters of water for each batch. I put in one pound or 450 grams of pale ale dry malt extract. I usually use um, uh, Pilsner. And then uh, I also added in... Uh, 50 grams of each of these sugars. Um, so I figured out that I figured that that would be about 10 percent of the fermentables, about because it's four, 450 grams versus 50 grams. So it's not it, it's not 10 percent, but it's about that. So it's it's around the range that you would would put into say a Belgian beer, right? Somewhat, maybe a little bit more. Anyway, uh, so I used 50 grams of each of these mystery syrups or mystery <laughs> mystery, syrups. mystery sugars that, that we were, were, will reveal here shortly. And I boiled for 30 minutes, so, and I added 5 grams of Holler Tower Middle Fruer at 2.8% alpha acid at the beginning of that 30 minutes. I chilled with an ice bath and uh, racked into a one-gallon jug and added three grams of Safale BE-256. Ah. So now, Mr. Homebrew Store Owner, what is what is Safale BE-256? That is a Cezanne yeast, right? Well, it's a... Oh, well, it's a Belgian yeast. I'm not sure if it's Cezanne. It might be an Abbey. I'm not really sure. But it's a Belgian... But yeah, it's a Belgian... It's definitely yeast. Belgian. So we will... As I, as I introduce these sugars... I'm going to do this part a little differently too because I've got the three sugars in a uh, in a bag. <laughs> you better let them out. <laughs> I, got, I saw them in concert the other night in Tulsa. <laughs> I've also got I've also got uh, Prince Albert in a can, but that's another <laughs> that's another thing. So as I introduce the so the plan is to sample a beer. Yep. Talk about a sugar. Sample a beer. Talk about a sugar, and go on down the line. And at the okay. end of it see what we think of each of the beers and see if we can match them up. All right. Does that sounds, sense? sounds fun. Are sounds you game? Good. I'm game. All right. So uh, the beers look similar. Number three is is a few shades darker. It is. Number three looks visibly richer. It's, it's a darker shade of mahogany. Hmm. Or copper, actually, more. more than yeah, it's more of a <clears throat> more of a brownish. It's not yeah. toward the end of it like a stout or a right. or a porter, but it's it's definitely darker. It's a brown rather than a copper color. The other two. Now, all three of these beers, I think, you know, we sample a little bit before we turn on the mic. All three of these beers, I would call drinkable. I yeah. think they're they're uh, tasty tasty beverages. There's nothing off mm -mm. in any of them. They don't look the part, but, well, <laughs> I was going to say they don't look the part, but they taste a little bit like an English mild, but they don't really. Oh. But they kind of do. So they, 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 they have that sweetness. They're the long in the finish. Um, you know, good mouthfeel. So they're not crisp and dry. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not uh, tart and refreshing. Mm-hmm. Although they are kind of refreshing, oddly enough, with all that sugar in them, but um, 
but they they remind me more of a British rustic style. Okay. Well, that fits. I mean, our friend Peter Simons, uh, you know, he wrote the wrote. He's written a couple of books on uh, resurrecting old um, English styles of beer, and they were not not shy in using uh, sugar. Yeah. Uh, and and sort of darker, you know, uh, invert sugars in the, in the beer. So uh, that's interesting that you that you said that. I'm not getting a ton of Belgianiness. No, I'm not either from from any of these. There's not a lot of uh, fruity esters from the Belgian character. There's not. There's no hop character other than the bitterness. Right. And I think there's an appropriate amount of bitterness in there. And that's just the the global <laughs> global impressions on the. On the recipe that I used to brew all three of these, yeah, no, I, I agree completely, and I'm kind of surprised to comment on the yeast for a moment because I would expect some telltale signs from that yeast, but mm -hmm. um, but there aren't any, unless unless he said they really play well against that sugar, you know. Being, I wish I could, I wish we had looked it up. <laughs> I, I don't remember if it's a Cezanne yeast or an Abbey yeast. And so that would make a difference in how it plays against these sugars, I think. According to the package of the Saf Brew BE-256, uh, it's manufactured in Belgium. Characteristics. Yeast recommended to brew Abbey-type beers, known okay. for their high alcohol content. It ferments very fast and reveals subtle and well-balanced -ba aromas. Yeah. So... Uh, and it could be that that I was over pitching because even even three grams, you know, in a six pack, <laughs> maybe maybe over pitching. Maybe. So what do you think well, of beer beer number one? Well, just judging it on its own as a standalone beer, I think it's kind of thin. Hmm. It does drink pretty pretty well. I wish it had a little more body. It's a little thin for me. Huh. Um, so if I were gonna if I were going to make the beer quote unquote better, I would maybe put some carapils in it at brewing, oh. just something to add just a little more mouthfeel. Okay. Having said that, the beer tastes good. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I actually do get a little fruitiness on the back end after I've swallowed the the beer. It it leaves a little bit behind that's kind of fruity and there's some esteriness on the back of the tongue. I don't know what that is exactly. Could be botulism. <laughs> uh, I'll let you know later. I'm still yeah. kicking. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a no-chill batch that I've had for a year right. in the basement, unfermented. Um, <laughs> but actually, it, it's it's real nice. Actually, there's nothing wrong with it, as far as you know, as far as uh, mm. any kind of any kind of weird defect that you'd you'd want to hit on. Um, I do get a little good. bit of brown sugary kind of a thing. It's not overwhelming. Yeah. But, but yeah, I would counter, I would go along with you in saying that it's not overwhelming. One might think that it's part of the grain bill, mm -hmm. in a way. You know, the, like a darker grain or like a special B or something like that. Yep. You know, rather than a sugar addition. Uh, you know, sometimes when you have the high alcohol, uh, you know, these beers. Spoiler alert: range from six to to 6.7% alcohol, so not terribly high in alcohol. Uh, but a lot of times when you do get those those big Belgian beers, you know, and it may be because of a, a higher finishing gravity, but you do get a lot more sweetness, and yeah. they are kind of more sweet and sugary. Yeah. Um, these all finished at 10.10, so. Okay. Um, so there's not that. But, th but is there anything, anything that you can talk about the character of the sugar itself? A little bit, yeah. So, it it's it kind of makes me want some mapo. I just <laughs> it, it reminds it reminds me of mapo. I want my mapo, you know. <laughs> For those who aren't ancient, what was what was mapo? <laughs> well, it was a breakfast cereal, and it was maple, and it and it, it was good stuff. But it's that brown. It, it tastes like brown sugar. Mm. Only it's very it's it's very light. The, the 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 sugar sensory that I get from it isn't very strong, right? And so I do get a hint of brown sugar. It's not maple, it's not um, table sugar or castor sugar with some other flavor added. I could go along with 
crystal malt with a with a heavy dose of crystal malt. Mm. I could go along with that, but otherwise, um, I think the sugar. I would definitely identify it as a brown sugar. I'm not sure that I'm have an educated enough palate to say whether it might be date sugar, mm. you know, some kind of. But it's kind of a clean brown sugar yeah. kind of flavor. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing that stands out. Yep. As far as um, okay, yep. well that's that's what good. we got on it. Okay. Let's take a quick break to talk about our friends and sponsors at Tavor. If you listen to the show, you know about Tavor. It's a way to select delicious craft beers you may not be able to find in your area and have them delivered to you. It's not a beer of the month club where someone chooses beer for you. You only pay for the beer that you choose over the course of the month. Signing up for Tavor is free. Just create an account at Tavor.com. That's T-A-V as in Victor, O-U-R.com. And download their iPhone or Android app, and you'll see notifications for two new beers each day that are available for purchase with in-depth tasting notes from Philip at DeVore. This month's look for Forgotten Road Ales, Hidden Springs Ale Works, Beer Zombie slash Mason Ale Works, Afterthought Brewing, Barntown Brewing, and Marto Brewing. If you're not interested in the beers you see, no worries. Just skip the ones you don't want. However, when you see something that you do want, don't wait. Just click on it to add it to your crate. Your beer arrives fresh every few weeks, allowing you enough time to fill a box and pay the least shipping. That's smart. Why don't you check it out? It doesn't cost anything to sign up, and there's no obligation to purchase anything. In fact, if I can ask you a favor, go to Tavor.com, T-A-V as in Victor, O-U-R.com, or download the app, and when you sign up, Enter the promo code Basic Brewing, all one word. You'll get ten bucks off your first shipment of twenty-five dollars or more. Again, it's free to sign up, and there's no obligation to purchase. Sign up at Tavor.com, T-A-V as in Victor, O-U-R.com, or with the Tavor app, and enter Basic Brewing as the promo code. Well, that's beer number one. I'm going to bring out sort of at random uh, the. The different, the first sugar. The first sugar. I feel like I feel like Bob Barker, <laughs> Johnny right. Olson. Tell us what the first item is up for bid on the Price Is Right. I'm pulling out of the Brees Malting and Ingredients bag that I got at Homebrew Con. Oh my! And I've got Grandma's Gold Standard All Natural Unsulfured Molasses. Molasses. Do you want to take a sniff of that? Well, while I read the uh, who wouldn't descriptor. Who wouldn't want to take a sniff of that? Grandma's molasses is the Ooh. highest the highest quality unsulfured <laughs> sun ripened sugarcane molasses. It contains no preservatives, artificial flavors, or artificial colors, and is fat free, gluten free, and kosher. Oh. After the sugarcane is cut and crushed, the liquids are extracted and boiled. The two grades of grandma's molasses are created by the length of the boiling processes, and this is the darker grade. It's the secret ingredient for baking and cooking that's passed down from generation to generation. To meet Grandma's seal of approval, it would have to be great. Grandma's molasses is now made with non-GMO project verified ingredients. The non-GMO project is a non Okay, yeah, so it's got no GMO stuff in it. And as we say, get your grandma out more often. <laughs> <laughs> so... So there you go. Is that what they say? That's what they say. Oh, okay. So the original gravity of the uh, Grandma's Molasses beer was 1061. The final gravity was 1010 for an ABV of 6.7%. Not saying that that was beer number one. Right, no. Just saying randomly that's... The, and, the, and the reason I'm bringing these out is I'm not wanting to, like I am, is I'm not wanting to, like, bias you. Right. In any way, and I hope it's a little fun. It's fun to do it this way. You, you could bias me for about fifty bucks. <laughs> you bias off. I'm, I'm in the bag for Grandma's molasses. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, she's the gold standard. <laughs> I've got to take my grandma out more often. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she's been she's been unsulfured. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. So what do you think of the smell of it? It's it's at the it's at the dregs of that jar. Well it stinks. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> but I think it's because it's hot out here. 
It's kind of here. Let me you have know, a whiff. It's Arkansas in August on the last day of August. It's hotter. Than... Yeah, here. What a host I am. <laughs> Having you out here, Susan was like, "You want me to turn the ceiling fan on there out there?" I was like, "No," and my blow wind across the mics. So it does. I don't think that smells like three miles of bad road. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think molasses gets old, does it? No, it doesn't get old, but it gets pungent. It's got a it's got a wang to it. Yep. Um it's it's unsulfured, so it's that's I guess it's not sulfur I'm smelling. I, I just think it's I just think it's starting to I just think it's starting to turn south. <laughs> <laughs> it's headed down to Nacogdoches. It's got that old molasses. <laughs> it's really old. It's, this is great grandma's <laughs> No, I I just think it it has a lot of uh it's fruity pungent. esters. It's pungent. And it's hot and so it's very fragrant. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Nobody likes a smelly grandma. <laughs> no. <laughs> she needs some lavender a, smoked malt. Except a, a smelly grandpa. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to guess which one that is. Although I have a guess. I have a guess. But, <laughs> but I want to see what the others Mainly are. Mainly because I saw the uh, fermenters. But um, Okay. Okay, I'm on to beer, beer number, two. number two. I'm swatting flies and drinking beer over here. Mm. Okay. Now, beer number two. Has a, a little bit more robust sugar mm. Mm -hmm. flavor. Oh. Now, I like that. That's pretty good. I like, number one was kind of neutral. Yeah. This one has more of a dark uh, fruit mm -hmm. flavor to it, to me. Yeah, this is this has got some, this has got, this has got some good stuff going on in it. I mean, it's undeveloped in this sample. Right. But... It definitely has. It definitely has. Um, I would definitely want to brew with this sugar again, this, based on what I've tasted. This tastes me to me more like a Belgian double. Uh -huh. Yes, it does. And there's some. There's a little more residual sweetness than the first one, uh, and it's it's got a lot more character. Like I say, it's got like dark fruit, mm -hmm. like maybe dates. Yep. Like I'm tasting some dates in there. I get I get dates, and I also get a hint. Just a hint of just a skittering of snow that would cool a hobbit's toes <laughs> at Christmas time, <laughs> because it tastes a little bit like a Christmas. It, you know, it could be, it could easily become a Christmas ale. Oh, okay, yeah. Put a little uh, cinnamon or whatever yeah, in yeah, the nutmeg. A, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not enough to become a pumpkin spice. No, you don't. Nobody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The marketplace disagrees. Well, <laughs> the other day, <laughs> like a few weeks ago, I posted on Twitter. Uh, you know, people are complaining about the early release of uh, seeing seeing complaints about the early release of Oktoberfests means complaining about pumpkin beers is just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's a taste. I actually beer. like that. I like that quite a bit. Mm. I definitely would would revisit that that bottle of beer for sure. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I would endorse that. Okay, is that all we get to say about that? We talked a long time about the first one, but I think it's because just we had a lot of introductory. We yeah. had some exposition. This to one's cover just there. more. This one has more going on. The it's the fruit's darker. It's more pronounced. Um, it reminds me of lots of different kinds of beers, so that's really nice because mm -hmm. it's like it, that's my imagination goes some places, places where the first beer was kind of, eh, it's like kissing your unsulfured grandma. <laughs> it just didn't do much for me. Okay, it's fall and time to start thinking about making ciders. The next seasonal strain from Imperial Organic Yeast has you covered. A40GF Bubbles is a traditional cider strain. Bubbles is a beautiful strain for fruit juice-based fermentations. The clean profile of the yeast, especially when it's used at the lower end of the temperature range, allows the nuances of the fruit to be prominent in the finished bubbly beverage. This strain is produced on 100% gluten-free media. Imperial Yeast does not recommend this strain for the use of wort-based fermentations, but when you see apples or maybe even pears, if you want to make a perry, uh, available this fall, think of Imperial A40GF Bubbles. 
You know we love Imperial with those 200 billion cells in each easy-to-open package. My stir plate is dusty because I don't make starters anymore for moderate gravity 5-gallon batches, and my airlock is usually bubbling before bedtime. Ask your local homebrew store about Imperial Organic Yeast and check them out at imperialyeast.com. That's imperialyeast.com. Now, I have to say that Susan, my wife Susan, randomized these beers, so we're... We're just we're just tasting them in the order that she she picked. Okay. And and I'm bringing out these. I have a, a <laughs> uh, in my mind I I thought uh, I would bring out the sugars in a way that uh, well I ha- I have my my reasons for bringing out the sugars that I'm the way I'm going. So the so Johnny Olson, can you tell us about the second sugar ingredient? And Steve is leaning forward. To see that it's Cairo Cairo syrup, Cairo dark corn syrup. Oh my! Or is it? I saw on a British cooking show, Cairo. <laughs> well, Cairo syrup. Yeah. But down here, down around here, we say Cairo syrup. Cairo syrup, and that's used mostly to make um, pecan pies. That's right. Cairo dark combines the natural sweetness of corn sh- syrup with a small amount of molasses. Hmm. And has no high fructose corn syrup. With its more robust flavor and color, it's ideal for many baked goods. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was a hummingbird. Corn syrup is a mildly sweet syrup derived from cornstarch. It serves many different functions, but it's mainly used in recipes to provide sweetness, moisture, and a smooth texture to cook sweets and baked goods. Corn syrup serves different purposes depending on the recipe. Most often it's used to give dishes sweetness and moisture. <laughs> Unlike sugar, corn syrup can prevent crystallization while giving a smooth texture to cook sweets and baked goods. Its many different uses don't stop there. Corn syrup can also enhance the fresh fruit flavor in jams and preserves and give balance to savory dishes. Ooh, whoa. put some corn syrup on your steaks maybe. Yeah. So they don't, uh, so there's no high fructose corn syrup in the Cairo. And I have read on the internet that Cairo is invert sugar. Yeah. Invert table or invert sugar is table sugar, also known as sucrose that has been split by breaking the molecular bonds of sucrose into glucose and fructose. It is also known as inverted sugar, invert sugar syrup or trimaline. The result is a thick as honey clear liquid, except in this case when they added molasses back in, that has all the great attributes that most sweeteners have plus additional features. So there you go. There you go. So I suggested the uh, dark Cairo syrup to uh, to Peter Simons to use in his British uh, recipes, and he actually found some. He sent me a picture. He's, but I haven't, Peter. I haven't heard f- back from you whether you used it or not. So uh, let us know if you're listening. Wow. And uh, see what you thought about the uh, Cairo syrup. And you could have used the leftovers to make some pie. That's some, right. Some pecan pie. So, did you smell anything from the Cairo? Well, it kind of stuck too. <laughs> it's because it's 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 got that it's got that hot port swang going. Hot <laughs> port swang. They were at the Roots Festival. They were. <laughs> they were good too. It does. It's not terrible. No, there is a. There are definitely some fruity esters coming off of there. Uh, it it does. I don't know. Maybe it's my imagination, but maybe I think the molasses and the Cairo syrup smell a little sulfury to me. Maybe, but maybe that's just my imagination <laughs> since I saw that word sulfur. Well, just because they're unsulfured doesn't mean that they're not naturally sulfured. <laughs> uh, who knows? I don't know. No additional means. sulfur no is additional added. No additional sulfur. Um, so that was that was sugar number two. Not necessarily beer number two, but there was sugar right. number two. Now, Interesting. are you ready to go on to beer, beer number, number three. three? It's the darkest of the three. Not necessarily the strongest flavored of the three. Not anymore. <laughs> What'd you do to it? Well, <laughs> I took it for a ride. <laughs> it went, it's been when, your spit bucket this whole When moment. we first poured these, number three, when they were cold, and which they're not anymore, um... I thought number three had the the most flavor. It was the most flavorful of the three. Now I don't I don't think it is. Now I think number number two is. Mm. And um, 
Number three, actually, I'm kind of disappointed because I was looking forward to coming to its evaluation. But um, now my second and third, I have to back back off my original statement because the second and third sips, there is some, as that flavor begins to build up on my tongue, there is some, shall I say, molassesy <laughs> character building up. Yeah, there is in there. Uh, some really dark fruit uh, flavors uh, building up, and it's not. I think it's good. I don't know that it's my favorite, but I think. Well, the, there's nothing wrong with it. That's for sure. And there's some some more, not burnt, but more cooked character mm -hmm. in my mind to those flavors. You know, it's like you left the sugar on the stove just a little while longer. Yeah. More caramelization happens, you know. I get more of a wine, a wininess to it. Huh. Wine-like. What kind of wine? Like I wouldn't know the difference, but what? I don't know. Just, it just, um, maybe a Chardonnay from the south of France, something not too exquisite. <laughs> you could say anything. I'd be like, oh, okay. I know, right? <laughs> I know, it just has, it just, it has kind of a... I'm oh. thinking Thunderbird. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it doesn't taste like Thunderbird. <laughs> Mad Dog 2020. Yeah. I thought that was my favorite beer when all three were cold. It's my least favorite. Well, I didn't say that. I wouldn't say it's my least favorite, but I don't know about that. I haven't tasted number one in a while. Number three to me is more brown sugary than the other, mm -hmm. th uh, the other two. Number two is the most complex of the three. Mm -hmm. Number two has a lot of different flavors going on in it. Number three... Is yeah, it's it has a lot of flavor, but it's kind of a one trick pony, right? And then number one, who knows where that thing went to high school? <laughs> it's kind of blah. Yeah, there's not much going on. Yeah, at all. Yeah, I would rank number two as my favorite, number three as second, and then number one just mm -hmm. kind of just because it's neutral. There's just yeah. nothing. There's nothing wrong with it, and the sugar. You know, I I, I would say that. Not knowing even what the third sugar is, but so far at least the other two, I mean, they, they're fine to brew with, and in a full, in a complete beer, right? They might be just fine. And I, I neglected to say the dark hero syrup had an original gravity of ten fifty six, a final gravity of ten ten for an ABV of six percent. So it has the least alcohol of the three. Ah, okay. Our friends and sponsors at Groenfell and Havoc Meaderies now have exciting mead starter packs. Not familiar with delicious craft meads? Check out the classic mead sampler at groenfell.com. It's got a four-pack each of Groenfell's Valkyrie's Choice, Old Wayfarer, and Nordic Farmhouse. Or be a bit more adventurous with the modern mead sampler with a four-pack each of three Havoc meads, Psychopomp, Root of All Evil, and Hop Swarm, which is a, a delicious dry hopped mead. Each starter pack comes with a free mead guide and a cocktail recipe card. Hmm. And, get this, free shipping across the country. And you'll also find some fun mystery swag tossed in there, too. Ricky and Kelly want you to step into the delicious world of craft mead like so many other certified mediacs who are already on board. Check out the Mead Starter Packs at Groenfell.com. That's G-R-O-E-N-N-F-E-L-L. -L. So ready to reveal the I am. third ingredient. All right. He's leaning forward. Let me make sure I get it around right. Anticipation. Hungry Jack. Hungry Jack. Original. <laughs> Original pancake syrup. In the microwavable container. Oh my gosh! So uh, there's not there's l less information about Hungry Jack act out there. It's the original thick and delicious sidekick for every stack. The microwave microwavable bottle shows you when it's hot, and it even has an easy pour cap. That's what we know. Other than you might want to read the ingredients on the back. Well, you don't have your glasses on, but it's corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup, mm. water. Those are the first three ingredients. <laughs> and it came, contains 2% or less of a lot of things I can't pronounce, including <laughs> caramel color, uh, sorbic acid, and sodium benzenate, benzenate, 
sodium citrate, natural and artificial flavors. Ah, there you go. Well, you, so just you, went, can, you just went all out on this. You can you can smell that one too. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to. <laughs> well, that smells like that smells like pancake syrup. Best if used by December eighteenth, nineteen seventy three. Where'd you find this? <laughs> My in grandma's when I when I went to let grandma out, it was in the pantry. Apparently, Jack wasn't that hungry. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that really sheds some light on things because one of these, I definitely tasted maple. Oh. I just don't remember which one. <laughs> well, you've still got some in front of you. I know, but now they're hot. <laughs> Boy, Steve is such a good friend to endure all oh. of the hardships of drinking beer out on the uh, porch. At this point, um, I think we have a good chance of getting this one correct. Boy, man. At least I feel confident in mine. I don't feel confident, but but I know what I'm going to guess. I feel like I should tell you. Maybe, no. Nobody, don't tell me, don't I won't. Me. Don't tell me anything. Okay. Do you have guesses? I do. All right. I'm going to guess that... Um, I'm going to guess that number one. Oh, is, wait a minute! For it, oh, the the hungry jack started <laughs> off at ten sixty, finished at ten ten for an ABV of six point six. So it was it was as fermentable as the molasses. Hmm. So you know it still made a beer, and one of these is that, and uh -oh. we we don't find it awful. Although you're making a face now, these are drinking. starting to taste pretty rank. Well, you're <laughs> drinking. Hundred degree beer. <laughs> I have a plastic cup. <laughs> like I'm in an Arkansas chain gang. <laughs> can rely on your earlier <laughs> on your earlier perceptions. Okay. I'm gonna say number one is the Kiro syrup. I'm gonna say number two is the molasses. And number three is the hungry jack. Ooh. Different? Way different, I bet. Well, the molasses beer in the fermenter was the darkest one. And it's still the darkest, isn't it? I, I don't know. Because number three is the darkest. And, I, and that's why I always thought number three would be molasses. But when I taste them, I get, I get this weird maple thing out of this beer. And so that's what uh, I'm... Interesting. But, okay. Well, you got to go I, with I don't what know. you... So you say number one is... Cairo. Cairo. Number, number two, two is, is molasses. molasses, and three number is three hungry. is the hungry jack. We got we're going. I think number one is the pancake syrup. Number two is the K row, and number three is the molasses. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I would not disagree with your choices. I just because you're a don't supportive have a clue. friend, <laughs> <laughs> and I have little invested. <laughs> okay, number one. Okay. <gasps> number one's the K row syrup. Number no. one is the K row syrup. So did you? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I said Cairo, molasses, and hungry jack. Okay. Number one is the Cairo syrup. God. Number two is the hungry jack. Ah. So I had those two flipped. And then number three is the molasses. So I got the molasses right. Okay. So we each got one right. I like mm. the hungry jack the best. I did too. Well, there you go. I thought I thought all this time I was like, this number one is is one dimensional and doesn't taste like much. It's got to be the Hungry Jack pancake syrup. And number two, you know, was delicious and and you know we said all the nice things about it and it was it was delightful. And I thought, well, that's got to be the K roll syrup because I know that number three is the because it's darker. I know that number right. three is the molasses. I'll be dog. I, uh, the Hungry Jack, just the pancake syrup was our, our it, was our favorite. It was the dark horse, uh, so to speak. Yep. Well, I'm, I am. Would gobsmacked be a, a word to use in this? It would be. Holy smokes! It's microwavable too, by the way. 
<laughs> now, I wonder if, if fresher molasses would taste different. See, that's what I got to... I don't know. But it's been kept in the pantry, and it's then the lid's been on, and so, you know, like, no liquid has evaporated from it, I wouldn't think. Yeah, you know, I... In hindsight, I have to, <laughs> I have to say that, that that it makes sense that number two, being the most complicated flavor profile, which we both agreed on. Mm -hmm. But Hungry Jack has the most flavors going on in it. Oh, it's got the maple thing going. Whether it's fake maple or real maple, we don't know. But you know, it's got a, it's got some different flavors coming at you. They don't specifically say maple floor. They say natural and artificial flavors. Yeah. But I bet you that maple is a flavor. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be maple syrup. It's fake I, maple syrup. I would, I would totally make a Belgian double. Heck yeah. Out of that. It worked great. Wow. Jeez Louise. Well, I just tell you what, that is just, that is just something else there. I just think I need a great knee high. <laughs> Or some Mapo. <laughs> some Mapo. That's right. I've, I've seen the black and white animated commercials for Mapo. <laughs> I want my Mapo. I want my Mapo. Wow. I'm, it's, I need to sit down. Oh, I'm already sitting down. I, that's, I, wow. I'm surprised too. I, I don't know why. I was just throwing caution to the wind thinking, well, maybe the color just went out of the, you know the the molasses there at the end, and it just it lightened up, and I don't know. I thought but, the I thought perceptions. I thought I thought I thought when I was brewing these that the molasses was going to be the most delicious. That's what I would have picked, knowing what the ingredients were. Right. And pre taste, so I would have said, well, the molasses is surely going to taste the best. And then but, then I would have said the Cairo syrup. Just because it's an invert sugar, um, and then I would, I would have, I, I threw the, the pancake syrup in there just because I had it, and I was like, eh, that's huh. this will be a fun wild card to throw in there, and that's why I saved it for the last coming out of the bag. I thought it'd be funny. Well, that's, it, well, it, it wasn't ha ha funny. <laughs> Hungry, Hungry Jack. <laughs> it's more like you're gonna go out with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sh Sh Sheila, that's that's not funny. <laughs> Um, he's kind of well. Never mind. <laughs> Hungry Jack. But you know what? This this is a good segue into the blueberry mead that I have going. So I've made, and it's just about ready to bottle. Mm. Uh, but I have a five gallon batch of blueberry maple maple syrup, but blueberry maple mead on French oak. Huh. So it's not in the barrel. But I got this cool French oak stuff that I put in it, and I'm going to bottle that pretty quick, and so we'll be able to do a nice show wow. in a few weeks or months, but wow. whatever. <clears throat> wow. Okay. All right. That well, was... I think our work is done here. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> wow. And I'm now I'm thinking in my head that I need to, I need to be brewing a Hungry Jack double for wintertime. Yeah. I would, hmm, there you go. All right. I want to know where Aunt B is with that fried chicken. <laughs> oh, Andy. Oh, Andy. Oh, Andy. <laughs> oh, Aunt B. <laughs> Did you have any ants growing up? I probably, no, we didn't I, call them ants. I probably, yeah. I had a few ants. They were Good ants. They were my great ants were ants. But anyway. All right. That's the, <laughs> that's the brief, that. brief visit to how much of a... Hey, seed is James. <laughs> All right. Tonight's okay. episode. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thanks, Steve. This is fun. Thanks, James. It was fun. Well, thanks again to Steve for braving the heat and to listener Ken for the inspiration. I'm thinking a Hungry Jack double may be my next brew. <laughs> that was surprisingly that's surprisingly delicious. <laughs> if you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to want to say howdy, uh, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Check out our mobile-friendly shop at basicbrewingshop.com. And thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. 
special goodies coming your way. Check that out at patreon.com slash basicbrewing. So until next time, until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer. Production help for Basic Brewing Radio and our website is provided by Kelly Dots. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. Talk to you next time, everybody. In the meantime, stay well and stay tuned. So long. <laughs>